everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I want to thank you all very much for your wonderful reception of my mug rug tutorial I did for beginner embroiderers using a Designs by Juju design file for her mug rug set one. This is what the mug rug looks like in its original form and I want you to take notice of the little a pretty little motif that was stitched on here. A lot of you asked me if I could do a tutorial on how to merge embroidery design files and I'm gonna do that. I want you to consider outside the box, okay, because there's a lot you can do with these things. I'm gonna use this simple mug rug design to show you what you can do when you merge files. So the first one I did, I did one last week, and this is the basic same mug rug that I used to make the green one just a second ago, but I removed the motif completely, and I merged in a Mendy design from Designs by Juju Sea Life, and this is fish number one. And if those of you who have variegated thread like this, if you have variegated thread and don't have a clue what to do with it, I highly recommend that you give a Mendy design a stitch out. And there's a really easy way to merge them all. You just make them all one color and let the, let it run. And it's, it just it works really great and they're a lot of fun. And then I also made this other mug rug. This is another two designs and I added a letter. I used in Brilliance Essentials to make all of these. This one, I took the motif stitching out. I added in a Sashiko overall background stitch. This is Designs by Juju set number five, and I used a, a nice cross hatch to give an all over background stitch, and then I put a letter in it with for my initial. It's very easy to do using in Brilliance Essentials. I do want to make a note that in the very first video, I recommend that you watch that. If you need some help figuring out how to download design files from the internet and how to move them around on your machine and extract from zip. I show all about how to do that in the very first video. So this one kind of builds on top of that one. Now I did use in Brilliance Essentials in that video only because I wanted to send the design wirelessly to the Brother Luminaire for the stitch out but you do not need in Brilliance Essentials in order to move design files to your machine. You can save them to a USB stick by simply moving them from where, whatever folder you have them stored in to your USB stick. And an additional embroidery software is not required for that. However, for this tutorial, you will need some sort of embroidery software. I also have in Brilliance Enthusiast. You don't have to have it, but it has a precise positioning system that I really like, and so I use that. They work independently of each other, but they also work perfectly with one another. So if you're a beginner and you're not sure which one to get, I highly recommend you get in Brilliance Essentials, and I think you're gonna find it very easy to use and you're really gonna like it because we're going to do a couple of different things that you can do in Essentials. And the first one is we're going to merge designs, and the second one is we're going to resize designs. Let's go to the computer and let's get started. Merging embroidery designs using in Brilliance Essentials is very easy to do. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. In the first video, I did a simple stitch out of the Designs by Juju mug rug. Now I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna add some different elements into it to customize it even further. So the first thing I wanna do is navigate to the folder that holds my mug rugs. And they're right here. In my documents file, I have a folder called embroidery, and this is where I put all of my embroidery designs. In there, I have a folder called mug rugs, and then I have the, the designs by Juju simply quilted mug rug set one in there. I'm going to open up PES because that is the file type I'm using for my brother machine. It doesn't matter which one of these I choose because I am going to do away with the motif stitching, but I want to keep the overall body of the mug rug the same. So I'll just choose this first one. I'm going to grab it and drag it up. You can see the little plus sign. And when I let go, 
it fills the hoop. I'll minimize that. This is what the mug rug looks like prior to doing any kind of alterations to it at all. If you come over here to the objects panel, there's a plus sign. And when you click the plus sign, you can see here are the individual stitch outs that occur in the making of the mug rug. This very last one right here is the final stitch that puts the envelope back onto the mug rug. If we go up here, let's look at each one individually. And you can look at the instructions that come along with the mug rug set files, and it will tell you what each stitch is. Here's the placement line for the batting. Here is the tack down for the batting. Here is the tack down. You can see the colors are changing in here. This is the tack down for the top fabric. Here is the motif stitch, and here is the final stitch to put the backing on. Well, I don't want that motif stitch right there. So what I can do is highlight just that stitch. If you highlight up here, you're gonna highlight everything. You don't want to do that. Click off and they all unhighlight and then go back to just the one that I want to get rid of. Highlight that one and hit delete. Now I have the building blocks for the mug rug, but the motif is gone. So now I want to go to a sashiko block from Designs by Juju. This is sashiko block five. I love this set because it is so versatile you can see these thumbnails of what each block looks like. Let me go and make it a little bit bigger because I have another piece of software from Imbrilliance called Thumbnailer on my machine. It allows me to see the thumbnails. I'll link to it below. If you do any kind of embroidery, this is the best money you will spend by buying this utility and it works independently of in Brilliance Essentials. You do not need to have in Brilliance Essentials on your machine in order to use this. You're gonna love it though. And you long armers out there, it will also show you long arm stitching files. I like this because it has a honeycomb and you can see it has a single run and it does a triple run and they come in very different sizes. So you get a single run, four inch, five inch, six inch, seven inch, eight inch, nine inch. And this is the honeycomb. That's a very nice background fill. And then it goes to a nice little diamond fill. And then it has a nice rainbow looking clamshell almost fill there. But this is the one I want right here, the crosshatch. When you're choosing what type of design you wanna use as a background fill, you want to choose one that is as close to your hoop size as possible. So I have a five by seven hoop. I could choose this one right here, which is the five inch, or I could choose this one right here that is the seven inch. So here's the difference. If I choose the five inch, I'm gonna have to stretch it to make it larger. So you'll have a larger crosshatch design if you choose the five inch and make it bigger. That's fine, it will work, it's all on your personal preference. Or I can choose the seven inch and I can condense it and make it a closer background fill. If I was making a pot holder that is like eight by eight, I might wanna make those cross hatches just a little bit farther apart, but this is a small mug rug and I don't want the cross hatching to get lost. So I'm gonna choose the seven inch and I'm going to condense it down. And all you have to do is grab it and drag it and let go. Now in Brilliance is great. You can see that this seven inch design is too big for this hoop. And if you ever have a design that's too big for your hoop, right down here at the bottom, it'll show you. Your hoop is five and an eighth by seven and one sixteenth. The design that is seven by seven is too large, so it's in red. To get the size right, if you go to the thumbnail files for the mug rugs, you can see that they are all 4.90 by 6.81. That is the file size. And so that's what we need to make the size of the cross hatching. To change the size of this, you need to highlight 
Over here in the objects panel, you want to highlight the Sashiko block so it is so that it is selected. If you do the next step without selecting it, it won't work. So over here, you can see that this is seven inches by seven inches. We want to highlight this. Make sure that your padlock is unlocked so it doesn't scale proportionately. Right here, we want to go 4.90, and right here, we want to go 6.81 and hit enter. There we go. Now look, the red has gone away and everything is going to fit exactly like it's supposed to, and you have scaled it down. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, click off of that. You can click off of these by just clicking anywhere on the screen. Now I want to put my initial on here. So I'm going to click the, the lettering block, choose the A to create letters. That comes up real big. And I'm going to choose the Designs by Juju Kelsey. And I'm going to choose the largest one there is because I'm going to make it even bigger. So I'm going to choose that. That's nice. And I'm going to put a B on there and hit Enter. That's great. I'm going to make it even bigger. I'm going to stretch it to be a three-inch three letter. That's good. And I have in Brilliance Enthusiast as well as Essentials, and it has a handy-dandy little rotate 90 degrees button. That's perfect. If you don't have that, you can use this blue circle right here to rotate it any way you want. All right. I'm going to center it in the hoop by choosing this little square with the, all four arrows pointing that way. That's good. And whoop, I want to be 90 degrees. There. That's right. Perfect. Okay. We are almost finished with this. If you remember, this last stitch right here is the final envelope back. Well, we don't want that to stitch before the cross hatching or the monogram. We want that first. So the cross hatching needs to happen before the monogram. So highlight that one and grab it on the picture and drag it up and hover it over stitch number three. And that will put it below stitch number three. And then I'm going to highlight the B and I'm going to drag it up and hover it over the background fill, which will put it below the background fill. And then the very last one is the envelope back. That's perfect. There we go. That should stitch out just fine, just like that. If you're not sure and want to watch this stitch out, you can come up here to the stitch simulator and you can see and watch it go. That's perfect. All right. If you have a Solaris or the Brother Luminaire, you can click Utility, send to Solaris XP1, and I'm going to call it Mug Rug Dash B. OK. And you wait a second, and it will say File Sent to Machine. Tell it OK. If you do not have a wireless machine and you need to send it using a USB stick, you can go File, Save Stitch File as and I'm going to call it mug rug dash B2. All right. Now you can take the USB stick to the machine and stitch it out. You may notice how the machine slows down in a certain part of the stitch out. It's creating a jump stitch right there. And that is where the letter B will go. Just like that. So if you hear your machine doing that, don't worry about it. It's just minimizing the density of stitches underneath whatever's going to go on top of it.
it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe. I'm going to be doing more tutorials on Embrillion. If you have questions, please leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them as best I can. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.